I can redo, redo the engineering plans and then I'm not sure on the exact location. I know the house is set back far enough where I can go in front of the house as long as I'm 50 feet away from the street for the setback. I just don't know the location yet, but it will be on the other side of the driveway there. Okay. All right. Um, Emil, do you want to see it? Take a look at these plants. And you can have your old ones back and you can see the difference that, uh, you know, why, why we questioned it. So does anybody have any questions? No. I, I'm sorry if, if, you, uh, if you were under the impression that we'd be there today. Um, Right. We just, you know, we by saying what what it was, we expected okay. to happen. We just kind of. I just figured I needed to show proof of done. the uh, cleanup. We, we were so. really close, actually. Yeah. We okay. Just yeah, we could have stopped by, okay. but. Uh, Do you mind if I keep the photos? For the yeah, photo? you can. Yeah, you can keep those. Thank All you. right. Does anybody have any questions on this? No, looks good. No. I'm 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 pleased with uh, with what I see. That's uh, it's a we huge huge improvement. So of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I will entertain a motion to approve the cert Certificate of Compliance for DEP file SC 126-652. Second. Second. All right, motion made by Ann, seconded by Curtis. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. That's uh, 4000. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for taking care of this. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so that's the first COC. What? Um, Emil, why don't we go to the other COCs? Uh, just uh, you, you were, you went and looked at them. They're mostly old, old files from Cram Cranberry Bog building. Sure. So you want to go through each one, and we'll just give a. Yeah. So the next four are from uh, Bill Madden and GAF Engineering. Um, they're all for AD Make Peace um, properties. Um, so the first one on here is SE one two six three six seven. I believe that one is for um, cranberry bog construction, new cranberry bog construction. Um, so, Bill, if, do you have anything you want to add to that? On three on three six seven. Let me just um, put my hands on that one. Yep. So I think that was the bog off of Plymouth Street. <clears throat> okay, three six seven. That was. Um, that was a cram that was a cranberry related project. It was a pond that was um, constructed on land in agricultural use in the uh, at the rear of Plymouth Street behind the subdivision that was eventually constructed constructed there. Um, this was done, I think it was uh, over over ten years ago, thereabouts. The project was completed. I want to say that it was subject to an earth removal permit as, as well at the at the time, but. Um, this one, 367, wasn't picked up by the title insurance company. That was when I was doing the review of the files that the title insurance company pointed that um, were not closed out with an order. I think I found this one in the, in the folders related to the same piece of land. So the way I looked at it, it didn't seem that it was, uh, that a certificate of compliance had been requested in um, tried to head off something before it was asked after the fact, so we just simply um, okay. filed for a COC for that. Once again, it is a project that took back took took place some time ago. It's over ten years, okay. and uh, we had no issue with it. All right. And Emil, you looked at it, yep, and, and you out, thought it was fine. I looked at it. Um, everything looked like a standard, you know, cranberry bog operation. Um, yeah. All right. I think there's another permit in here related with that one, 309, um, but we can get to that one. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, COC for 126367. Move. Second. I'll second it. All right. Curtis made the motion. Carl seconded. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any no, negatives? No. All right, 4 0 on that. Next up is 126303 COC. Yes, 
so this one was the ORAD, um, I believe that has expired at this point. Um, also off of Plymouth Street. Yeah, on that one there, just to interject, I believe that that was the initial wetland filing project that took place for all the agricultural work and that wetland line was relied on to some degree for the subdivision that was was okay. built on Plymouth Street, on Plymouth Street as well. Um, it seems like it was the the order of resource area delineation was was recorded. Um, they just made it a recordable document, took your took the order of conditions and eradicated order conditions order and added in area order of resource area delineation and then recorded that at the registry of deeds that's not necessarily customary um, but it was that's what was done in this case the agent was uh, the one who suggested that we deal with it okay in that manner at that time which was, uh, was that Sarah yes it was okay uh, which we had no objection to um, also that was extended um, at least one time for we assume for future projects that that took place there but as Emil pointed out the uh, the resource area delineation is is well expired, and uh, that's what we think sh should should just be noted on on the uh, cert certificate of compliance is that the the permit is expired. Okay. Anything that does need to be done need that might need to be done in the future needs to start anew. And fine, no no issue with yeah, that. Makes sense. All right, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve this DOC for one two six three zero three. So moved. I'll second. Curtis, Carl, thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's four, zero. Uh, next up is COC for 126309. So again, yeah, this one's off of Plymouth Street. That's for uh, um, the kind of square cranberry bog. Um, that's right there with, um, you know, I went out and took a look at it. It looked just like it was on the plan, so I didn't have any issues. It was it was pretty pretty straightforward on that one. The bog was constructed, it is in place, it is being actively farmed right now. This one here, um, it was extended with, with, with conditions. And, um, you know, in, in what it states in there is something to do with it excludes the operation in new work associated with Whistle Glen subdivision, and that was in, included in the certificate of compliance. Our plan had nothing to do with the, the subdivision, so I don't understand how that found its way onto the order. Um, you know, the plan that we prepared in the, you know was for the Cranberry Bog project, not for Whistleberry Glen. Don't think it should have been included in the certificate of compliance um, at the time it was issued, but it was, and there was an extension order and what have you. We need to we need to eliminate it, and the only way we can do it is through a a um, certificate of, certificate of compliance. And our position on that was is that the conditions that were that were added as continuing conditions weren't really conditions, they weren't maintenance, they weren't conditions that needed to be ongoing with the project. And, uh, you know, in fact, I think that even some of the local bylaw has changed since the original time we did that plan. How, so long, how, how are, long ago was this? Oh, God, this was, uh, let's see what the date was on the plan. I think it's close to 20 years in this one. Okay. <laughs> But the interesting part is somebody went out there on the, in 2022, and I don't know who it was. It was nobody from my office. We did, we didn't do it, you know. But there was a certificate of compliance issued at that time. But it did include those um, those other continuing conditions that aren't really <coughs> continuing conditions, unless I have the wrong one. I think you're no, talking I'm on about the wrong one with that. I'm sorry. The next, I think the last you're one. About yeah. Said the less so that the less. Yes. I don't think this one has a, a COC at this point. The um, the three the three ten is the one that you had requested the ongoing con conditions to be removed, and I believe that's actually a single family dwelling. Um, On High Street. That's the one we visited. Yep, that's yeah, the one we yeah. went to today. Three ten. Three ten. Yes. Three ten. Yes. yes. That's one twenty seven High Street. 
All right, so this the 309 is uh, 309, 309 is just a, like a cranberry bog, building a cranberry bog. Um, I, I didn't see a COC. Okay. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, of course. Um, Mr. Madden, is yes. I, I'm the newest person here, so forgive me if this is a newbie question, but I was kind of surprised to see all these um, come through from so many years ago. So what, are you guys just going through trying to close up loose ends or? I'm a title insurance company, did an examination of the property, uncovered these, All um, these, clothes, these orders of conditions. Mike McVeigh from Make Peace is here with me as well, yeah. and he can speak directly to that. But <clears throat> yeah, the genesis of this, sorry, Mike McVeigh, AD Make Peace, <clears throat> was um, we're looking at a potential sale, and this is a huge parcel that touches High Street to the north and Plymouth Street to the south, and so they, they, they researched the entire parcel, and it brought up a number of <clears throat> exceptions and including one that I guess they missed that Bill found and we're just simply trying to um, close them out I see so even though they seem disparate geographically not really like did they yeah that's a function of how large this parcel the, how is, large it is I historically yeah okay it was just hard for me to really conceptualize what was going on so okay a uh, an approved COC uh, is really only important when you're selling. I mean, some people get it done as soon as their work is finished and they don't have to worry about it. Others Just don't. forget about it. And we've had Life COCs here that are 25, 30 years old. And yeah, we have another one on this agenda from 1981, so. <laughs> <laughs> 43 <laughs> years. <laughs> That's really looking in the sock drawer. <laughs> okay, but thank there, you. There, there was a continuing condition on, on 309. That is, a, we don't believe is valid for our project because Whistleberry Glen didn't have that right. was the residential subdivision, so we would need a new. Well, we're hopeful to obtain a new COC for the work that we were responsible for, which was the primary related work. Three hundred nine is not High Street. That's no, not no. So you're looking for a new, or just a, an approval of, to get rid of the. Uh, you, uh, you're looking for a cert oh, I see what you're this saying. Is a you, you need a new one today. So we'd like a complete certificate of compliance for this. Okay. The exception was uh, was termed to be related to that subdivision. Uh, th okay, that really so, shouldn't have been included in the first place. Exactly. Okay. So, yes. All right. Um, I will accept a motion to uh, to approve the COC for SC 126. Uh, with any language that needs to be taken care of with Whistleberry Glen um, removed, if that's what you're looking for, is just, uh, I just think that approving the COC. It will be a complete COC. COC. Okay, yeah, all right. So I'll uh, I'll accept a motion to approve the COC for one two six three zero nine. Second, Carl. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Four zero. All right, 310. 310 is right. the house, correct? 310 is the house. And back in uh, 2006, Kevin Ford um, provided the commission with a letter stating that the project was completed in compliance with the order of conditions and the plan of record. Um, however, the, when the certificate of compliance was issued, there was some condi continuing conditions left on that. And those continuing conditions, at least the way we we read them, is those are a lot of regulatory requirements that anybody that comes before the commission would be required to uh, follow and what have you. And we don't really think they would follow up as um, you know as, as maintenance or something that required an, an ongoing condition for the project. And that's how we presented it. Okay. Yeah, we read them. We read them today when we were at the site, and and we agree they're they're uh, duplicitous of what what's already on the books as our bylaws and the state bylaws. So there's really no need to have them uh, there anymore. Um, and you were there today. Do you have any questions? On uh, well, I, I I don't have the document in front of me, but I think I have it memorized. So uh, basically, you were asking to have I think four conditions. Removed, is that correct? Yes. And the tenth condition was that these conditions won't expire. So, can you explain to me why would we be removing this? Since the Conservation Commission in 2005 did not want those conditions to expire. Uh, yeah. 
because because the bylaws dictate that that has to happen anyway. So there's no reason to have it in two places. You mean the four conditions? That the four right? conditions have to have to be followed anyway, regardless, because they are Carver bylaws and and state state laws. So what are they briefly? One is about structure. The first one is about boundaries. The structure should be built. Uh, no four feet deep dry well shall be installed. No further work that's permitted by this order condition shall be done within 100 feet. That's yeah. So you know anything anything that happens at this point that would be within our jurisdiction would require a new hearing. Okay. So Do you have any idea? Were you around when this happened? Like, why I, were I, you? I, I was the guy who signed all those plans and did all that work. I was responsible for it. Also, yes, I was. So, um, why why did they make these conditions? Well, I, if they were part you, of the law. You have to understand. Well, I mean, I understood all the agents and how they operated at the time. And, and at the time, I think the agent was of the opinion that it was better to try to con have continuing conditions um, attached to the project. But if you read the certification box, it basically says, it says condi conditions such as maintenance or monitoring. Those conditions aren't maintenance or monitoring conditions. If we had to do, you know, water table elevations or surface water monitoring or something like that for another purpose, then I would say yes, it would have been applicable. But in this particular instance, it was pu purely regulatory and, uh, you know, seems to be following the bylaw and not really a monitoring or a maintenance issue requiring right. a, continue, a continuing right. condition. Okay. okay. Uh, Emil, do you have any? Yeah, so I would that? just say that ongoing conditions of a COC don't necessarily have to be maintenance or monitoring related. They can be, you know, simple conditions like say the commission required you to have a uh, boundary markers that were set in perpetuity along a buffer zone. That could be an ongoing condition. Um, that's continued on through a certificate of compliance, and that's just a extra measure that um, you know the DEP uses to keep keep those conditions on on a permit. But I totally see what you're saying. Like these um, conditions are, you know, not really adding anything to the project at this point. Obviously, the project is completed over 20 years ago. Um, the house is there. We met the guy, um, the homeowner at the house today, um, you know, he's done everything according to the plan. Um, so, you know, he would still need to file if he wanted to do anything within our jurisdiction. And so at this point, you know, the the ongoing conditions that they're asking for to be removed, um, you know, they're not really playing a big role. Um, and, and so. typically those types of conditions don't get added in as, anyway. you know, they, they were here in, you know, our letter of April 6th, of April of 2006, you know, when somebody went out there to inspect the work and evaluate things, you know, they clearly felt, it, they explained in the letter that all the work was done in accordance with the plan and the order. And I think that is the, uh, the important Yeah, we did that too. We, yeah. we, we went out there and the, the homeowner knows nothing about this. So the only thing I'd ask is you stated <laughs> title insurance, but the homeowner didn't complain of that's not an issue for the homeowner and uh, AD Makepeace was a former owner so is that yeah well that land I think has been excluded from the the, the track of land and I don't know what the paperwork Mike has been reading but yeah we're ju just to satisfy it all we'd like to just clear it all out and as opposed to <clears throat> fighting a title insurer so um. okay okay and and those those exceptions that that we're talking about today we don't put them on our current approvals for okay. NOIs. Does they're anyone want this? they're not part of our boilerplate. Thanks. So uh, okay. That's fine. Thank you. Um, I'll entertain sure. a motion to approve the uh, COC for one two six three one zero. Um, yeah, the the final COC. So moved. And Curtis. Uh, with the second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the COC for 126310. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank okay. you both. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Uh, next up yes, is so the uh, 12636. So this is the old one that I mentioned. It's from 1981. Um, 
and a law office. Hold on law. one second. Sure. Uh, since you're not doing the Zoom meeting, is it okay if you turn the monitor off? Put yes. Sure. Right, and it's causing a glare. Thank you. <clears throat> so like I said, um, a law office reached out to us about this one. Um, so basically this project was for a subdivision um, for a trailer park um, or trailer home um, area in Carver back in um, 1981. It was issued to Miles Home Development Co., our company. Um, this is off of Cranberry Road in Carver. Um, that, so basically, um, you know, this was a big subdivision back in the day and um, all of the properties in that subdivision are kind of lit, were listed on that order of conditions. And at this point, um, you know, several partial COCs have been issued um, for different parts of that property um, and, you know, closing out different things off of that property, but it keeps coming up. In, in title searches because it was a big subdivision. And so this request is for um, the Calderones property at 42 Priscilla Mullins Way. Uh, I'll pass a map um, for you guys to look at. It's totally outside of conservation jurisdiction, their property. Um, we have no jurisdiction over it. They're just asking to be closed off of this old um, order of conditions um, because it, it keeps popping up um, on their um, you know, title every time that um, the property is sold. So um, their request is um, for a partial um, certificate of compliance to remove them off of this um, old permit. And I think we're probably going to have to keep coming back and issuing COCs for properties in this subdevelopment um, just because they keep coming up. Um, are these near Cranberry Village? Is that I, you know, I'm, I'm still getting this to know the area. Still, um, I think that's um, Miles Standish. Miles Standish yes. Road, yeah. The, 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 uh, oh, it's right on the border. It's right on the border of the... But it's near Cranberry Village. Yeah, yeah. Near, yeah. it's across the street. Across, yeah. across the way. Down the, down the street and across, across, the, uh, across the street. So again, it's totally outside of your um, jurisdiction. So they're, you know, just trying to get their, themselves off okay. of, you know, an old, uh, old permit. Um, do we have any idea how many are left to go? <laughs> I think there's probably quite a few. Um, unfortunately, there's quite a few properties in the subdevelopment. Um, you know, I, I looked through the file. It's kind of weird. There are there are complete certificates of compliances and partials in there, um, but for some reason, it's not. You know, it hasn't been closed out from from the registry of deeds. Um, so, property owners in this subdevelopment, it keeps popping up. This old, um, specifically SE one two six three six, keeps coming up. So I think you know we're probably okay. you know we'll we'll see how many you know come up um, with people. It's probably only to come up if people are selling their property. But yeah, it's yeah. All right. It just you know helps people. Um, with the sale and everything to get that closed before they um, sell. It's almost like each individual law is a separate. Unfortunately, I, I spoke with the lawyer um, and Gary on this one, um, and then they said, you know, it's likely that we're just going to have to keep issuing partials for each okay. lot. All right. Fine. Any questions? Anybody else on this? All right. I'll uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, COC for one two six dash three six. So moved. Second. Curtis and Carl. Uh, okay, it's moved and seconded to approve the COC for 12636. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Hearing none. It's approved unanimously. All right, that takes care of the, all the COCs. Um, the next two are together. We're going to switch the order of these. Um, so we're first going to do the uh, three-year extension request for New Leaf Energy, SE12658. Do we need to wait for Sarah? Or oh, you're there. I thought you were still out in the hall. Sorry. I'm gonna stay in the background. Okay, that's fine. Please. She'll save us if we need to. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Good evening. Uh, Dean Smith with New Leaf Energy. Matt Swansburg with New Leaf Energy. Gentlemen, how are you? Doing good, thanks. Good. good. Been a while. It has been a while. Um, we're here to request an extension on this order. Um, this is part of the Plymouth Group study, which you probably had other projects come before you for extensions. Um, it's been a very lengthy delay with those studies and a big capital improvement program for improvements to the infrastructure that has held it up for a significant time. Um, we think that they're getting close, but they've said they were close before, so we're, we're not counting on that. Um, so we're, we're requesting the extension for good cause because that was unavoidable, un, an unavoidable problem for us. Okay, when does, uh, when does the current one expire? Well, it was issued just before the COVID emergency order, so there was some tolling involved. So we calculated that the ex expiration would be May 3rd of okay. this year. All right. Emil, do you have any information on that, or does that jive with uh, the, the automatic extension yeah, that so the state it, granted it all these things? It seems that it was issued um, just before the COVID emergency, so this is kind of like you know, the last few permits that would be uh, it affected by the um, extension, um, it, you know, cause, because this was right before the um, um, emergency took place. Um, this is probably one of the last ones that would okay. have COVID tolling on it. So you're looking for May 3rd as your extension date in 2027? Yes. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions? On this, we've done this before. Yeah, I was going to say this is the same. Yes, same just, just different people. Yeah, different people, same, same so uh, it's dilemma. It's on Ward Street, right? We're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I will accept a motion to grant the three-year extension request for New Leaf Energy for SE one two six five eight nine. So moved. Second. Carl Curtis. Uh, okay, it's been moved and seconded to grant the extension. Uh, one, two, six, five, eight, nine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. It's approved unanimously. All right, next up is on this same thing. Um, there, you would like to have a discussion on the order of conditions. Also, well, Dean is. Go ahead. Would you guys just mind signing in on the sheet? Yeah, we just did. Okay, thank you. Gotcha. While Dean's setting up, just a little bit of background. Uh, we are uh, proposing, or we're looking to propose, <coughs> floating solar on the site. Uh, Dean has a high-level layout uh, with him today so that we can show the commission the locations of the ponds. Um, and ultimately, where <coughs> we'd like to discuss sort of the, the best path forward with this proposal in terms of our approach, whether or not uh, we're amending this existing permit that we have for the ground-mounted solar, or if it would be a new application. Um, but Dean can first show you guys a second. Sure. Um, I'm sorry for the scale of this. It's going to be hard for you to see. But the original solar program, or s solar uh, array, was here. It's already constructed. The order that we just extended was for uh, an addition of another ground mount system next to it. Um, what we're proposing at this point, there are several uh, tailwater ponds that are man-made ponds, and we'd like to place some floating solar in, in those. So there would be several arrays down here, and some of these two smaller ponds up in the northern part of the project. So this is an addition to what you're going to do, this yes. would be additional megawatts? Right. It would be okay. increasing the DC size of the system. We have an approval that would remain the same for the interconnection, so the AC size would not change, but the DC size would go up. Um, so can you describe the, the floating? And can, I just want to take a look, because I actually mount, mountain bike around there, so sure. I actually understand the area. If you sure. don't mind, just to see it. So um, the floating system is on a structure that's similar to what you would see with a floating dock or something like that. And then the modules are at a fixed tilt on those. 
So there's a number of those. Each module has its own little float, and those are connected in series. So there would be um, a staging area along the side of the pond, and they assemble those, and they then they float them out into the, into the water body. It would uh, have its equipment area would be off on the bank, so there would be the associated electrical equipment would be there, and there would be some anchoring that, that might come out to the, the edge of the water body to anchor it in place. So these are reservoirs for the fog, is that right? Yes, these are tailwater ponds that the serve, the, serve the, the agricultural use. Yeah, it's, this is the, yeah, this is the Cedar Meadows cranberry the property. Cedar Meadows, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, I know exactly what that Yeah, this is that, uh, Subdivision off to the back. Ward Street is up here at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the village. So you can put them loading and still they can use. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Okay. There's some rules around what we can do uh, with floating solar. The Smart Program of Massachusetts it, it allows it. Um, we can't cover more than 50 percent of the pond's surface. As Dean pointed out, it has to be a man-made pond. Um, that's also currently a, a DEP regulation. Um, so these are holding ponds for water, and when it's time to irrigate the bogs, um, there is some fluctuation in the water levels of the ponds, but the floating solar is designed to move uh, with the water as it goes up and down during the course of the year. So I know nothing about this, but there are, there's a osprey nest right there. Um, it, has there been any research into any potential environmental impact, like with species like red belly cooter turtles or anything? There was a study done here, and there, there were none observed, and, and the environmental consultant that we worked with determined that there was a low habitat value for them here. Okay. Um, so, one of the things that we, we'd like your opinion on is we would we'd like to come in and amend the existing order to add add the additional floating uh, system. So if that's acceptable to you, that's the path that we would take. And we're hoping that that you would find that acceptable. We can re-notice the neighbors and and go through the public hearing process to amend it. Okay. Um, my feeling is that I would like um, there has been no. Um, floating solar done on um, Steve Ward's bogs up on, off Purchase Street. There was at least a, a pilot program. And I think I'm the only one here who re remembers that, and that, that site visit. Um, I would like to uh, have everybody, this group, go out and take a look. Um, I don't see the need for it to be its own separate thing, uh, but I do want to look at where the uh, launches Air launch areas are going to be, and um, I would like for the new, the new members of the board to go out there and, and see because I don't think they've seen much of this site anyway. You know your whole plan, so I think it'd be beneficial for all of us to go out and see that. Um, but I, you know, you're other than places where you're putting these things into the water and any kind of associated electrical on shore, you're not really. Uh, damaging any more of the environment uh, than you have to. So I don't see the need personally for it to be its own thing. Okay. But I'd like the other members here to take go take a look. So if we can arrange a site visit. Uh, yeah, it would be helpful for me as well to get an yeah. idea of the site. I did have one question about the components. So you said that the floating components are in the water, but then there's a, you know, partial part of the, um, you know, components are on the shore. Um, does that require <coughs> excavation? Does that require foundation work? Um, be, and how close would, on, would that be to the would bank? Be on concrete pads. Okay. Um, and at what size are we talking for, for that? Um, they're, they're rather small. They would be <coughs> maybe five by eight for, for standard electrical. And are we talking directly on the bank of the pond or can they, are they set they're, back? They can be <laughs> set back as far as, as the uh, mission would desire, uh, because the, all the connection will be 
trenched under the ground, so we can take it mm -hmm. to wherever that is. Okay, so a little bit of trenching would be required in terms of excavation and then some foundation work. Yeah, generally, the equipment pad for the floating solar is going to look <coughs> similar to an equipment pad that you'd have for a ground-mounted solar project. Mm -hmm. You might have a transformer. Um, depending on how it's wired, there's typically inverters. Um, and so from uh, the standpoint of, well, how close does it need to be to the floating solar, it can be pushed back a ways from any environmental buffers on the property. It doesn't need to be right up next to the pond. So we've got some flexibility there too. Um, but basically you come <coughs> off of the floating solar array onto the bank and from there we like to keep everything underground to the nearest equipment pad. And we did have Beals and Thomas go back out and, and look at the site. There are some off-site wetlands down adjacent to this pond. So a portion of this, this system will be in the buffer to those off-site wetlands. So it makes sense to, to come to the Conservation Commission for that. They didn't note any, anything sensitive around the, the banks of these tailwater ponds. Um, they've been used for the agricultural use over time, so there's not a lot of growth going around the perimeter. Okay. When we do the site visit, if you could bring some kind of uh, literature or just, you know, of what these things look like. I've, I've seen them. I'm sure there are more than one manufacturer, but I've seen the ones that were made by a French company, I believe. Yep. Seal and Tear is who did this preliminary layout for us. So, okay. Um, we do have some of their literature that I can bring along. Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, that, that the members great. would like to see it. I think that Crescent Street property basically backs into that, just for frame of reference. It's close. Yeah. And I, these, I believe, are Mr. Hanula's box, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That that is, I, I believe this parcel that's adjacent down here. Okay. Is, is All right. So uh, you can arrange with uh, Emil to uh, a time that's convenient. Um, we're meeting on the twenty fourth of April, so uh, yeah. is our next one, and then after that is May. It's a little different because of. Yeah, I, I don't know off the I top think of my head, but I'd be happy to, you know, coordinate with you guys. Do you think it's going to take, um, you know, more time? I mean, obviously, you, you guys have to draw up some more detailed plans closer up and stuff. Like, do you anticipate this being, like, a couple months down the road or? Um, probably something on that order. Mm -hmm. um, from here, we'll probably go through a similar kind of meeting to introduce it to the planning board here in town. Well, so right. because we'll have to modify our, our zoning. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess it would yeah just be helpful for us, you know, it, like the um, to have some like pre preliminary um, drawings and stuff, uh, um, kind of closer in um, to the ponds yeah. before we actually go out there to kind of get an idea of the layout of the project. But um, again, yeah, it would you know it would be helpful for all of us to go out there and, and take a look. Well, if the location of the pad is flexible, mm -hmm. uh, it might not be a bad idea to go out there and take a look and then, you know, kind of figure out where the best places for these pads might be uh, mm -hmm. before you go to any kind of trouble of, of doing a specific drawing showing location. We, we do have a proposed location. On okay, if you got so that, that's I can, fine. I can show you what our initial plans okay. are. Yeah, bring that to the site visit and we'll take a look. Yeah, we will take your recommendations into account. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any other questions? No, I appreciate you willing to educate us, but I, I have not seen floating solar, so. There I've never seen been, There hasn't time. been much of it, at least <laughs> here in the, in, in the U.S. So, um, as you pointed out, um, one of the vendors that a lot of developers are looking to is a French company. Um, there's been a lot of floating solar developed in Europe, um, and I think we'll see more of it here. Um, but yeah, we're, we're happy to meet you guys out there on site and, and talk about it in more detail. I think I'll definitely sure. do some research yeah, before so I know a little more. And Thank I believe you. that the law in Massachusetts is that the, the bodies of water that are eligible have to be privately owned. Is that correct? Uh, it needs to be a privately owned man-made pond. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody's listening and think, figures, well, Samson's pond was yeah. man-made, <laughs> um, that's not going to happen. I already thought about so, that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good.
Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, there is an Eversource letter, notification letter. Yep, so this is a standard Eversource letter um, informing the town of Carver and the Conservation Commission that they will be doing um, routine maintenance along their <coughs> ROW corridors. Um, it's part of their um, 2023 to 2027 five-year vegetation management plan, um, and they have included this map. Um, so you guys can take a look at where it's located. Um, you know, these are pretty standard um, operations that they do along their um, power lines. Um, they are operating under certain exemptions from yes. permitting, so um, typically, you know, it's just kind of a heads up for the commission. So you talk about their big, like excavator things that go well over yeah they, like they use um herbicides in some cases um, um, as well as you know mechanical um, means I didn't know that. yep yep looks like north carver yeah okay that line okay is there any uh, process by which the people that abut that right away get notified about that um, I'm not sure about the, uh, you know, each individual homeowner. I believe this is kind of the um, the way that they standardly notify yeah. people. They notify the towns and the commissions, um, and you know, they give a certain period, which is laid out in that letter for comments. Um, so the power the power company the power company owns the easement across anybody's property, and they're right. basically uh, uh, they have a a granted uh, right to do what they need to do. Oh, I know, but I just wondered if anyone told people in Carver when they were going to come through with, because it's going to be very loud. And, especially you know. if they're using herbicides. Yeah, especially with the herbicides. So. Well, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I would think that they're, they're, they would always try to be a good neighbor. I mean, they always tell me when there's going to be a windstorm. <laughs> I get, text, get te yeah, texted text like constantly, so it yeah. could be that easy. Well, if both the windstorm and the pesticides happen on the same day, I wouldn't expect a call. <laughs> Might not be your problem. Yeah. <laughs> Might be your I depend on the wind the direction of the wind. Um, okay, fine. So really, we don't have to vote on that. It's just uh, it's a notification. So that's that's duly noted. And their Eversource is good like that. They're they're. Uh, they're very compliant with, with all of our regulations, and they're here uh, quite often. And they also go to uh, planning, and, for, and probably would for this as well. All right, next up, 185, 187 Meadow Street, Lauren Lavey. Uh, this is, anyone here from there? Yeah, I wasn't sure if Lauren was going to show up. Gary, are you, um, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. She said she was going to via email, so. I don't know what to tell you. She said she was going to show up. Okay. Well, um, do you have? Could you just, you know, fill us in on the brief update that you have for the commission on this one? Sure. Um, what it is is um, um, Brad Holmes. He's a local um, wetland scientist. Uh, I had been in discussion with him, Beals and Thomas, and others to um, uh, to be the third party in to. Uh, um, figure whether uh, the bog at 187 Meadow Street was an upland bog or a wetland bog. And Brad um, said he couldn't do it because he's not a soil scientist. But he did recommend a soil scientist, Art Allen, uh, who's um, out of the Worcester area. But Art's very, um, I've seen his resume and I've heard of him. He's, you know, uh, you know, very competent and, you know, he knows what he's doing, so he would be a good choice. But um, the uh, property owners at 187 thought he was too far away, so they were looking into finding someone more local. I said, you know, okay, sure, uh, as long as they're a qualified soil scientist with a wetland background, you know, we'll take a look at them. So that's where we stand right now. It's still in limbo. Okay, and I believe our enforcement order is still in effect? Uh, it's just a violation. Yeah, uh, yeah. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you know, till you folks say it goes away, it's still there. Okay. 
And don't forget, too, we got that email uh, January 29th, 2024 from DEP saying they have to comply with the town. So yes. uh, they have it from two sources. Okay. Thank you for the update. Yes. Yeah, that's all I got. We'll keep it on the agenda. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome. All right, next up, 73 Crystal Lake Drive, continued from 320. These are the trees. Uh, anybody here from there? Come on up. Please sign in. Yes. Um, so, um, as a, well, I was thankful for the community to come out and look at the trees this, you know, uh, this morning. So we're just very concerned about, you know, where in the proximity of the house and the age of the trees, and then, um, you know, the debris and fallout from that. Um, so, you know, we had pointed out the four on that property that's adjacent to the town property and then two other pines that were on the other side of the property, closer to the water, but also of the same magnitude. So we were hoping to get um, approval right. well, to get those removed. Uh, yes, you did. Uh, tonight we're talking about the four trees that are adjacent to the town property. Okay. Um, Anna and um, we went out there today, Ann and, and uh, Emil and I were there today looking at the trees and um, like a lot of trees, uh, tall pines that grow close together, uh, this, the interior of them don't have any pine needles on them where mm -hmm. the exterior does. And in this case, the, uh, three, um, the three pine trees that are on your property facing the house are all heavily vegetated towards your house. Okay. So our, our uh, definitely a threat the fourth tree is dead right so that obviously is uh would be able to come down so um i ha i had no and i don't think Anne, you did either had any amy no, no. you thought they were no i mean these are massive trees they're pretty old at this point so you know they are kind of the types of pine trees white pines that um are can be very dangerous in a storm. Um, these ones are close to your house. They mm -hmm. have branches that are leaning directly over your roof. Um, so I think it is in the best interest. You know, um, you're not right on the edge of the pond. Um, so I think it is in the best interest for safety, insurance, and everything right. um, to remove them. Again, the oak tree is dead, so that's that one is, um, isn't you know um, adding too much habitat value or anything. Uh, so I would say it's. Right. Um, straightforward to yeah, to and uh, after after I met you, with you, I came back here and ran into our uh, uh, head of de uh, public works, uh, mm -hmm. John Wood, and I mentioned the fact that there were, that we had seen four trees on your property, very close to the town property. Right. Um, and what I suggested to him is that we wait until you've taken your four trees down, and okay. then go out with the Department of Public Works to, to view the trees and see what shape they're in. There is one there that is certainly on its way to dying, if not right. dead already. The whole, the, you know, the bottom 10 feet of the bark is all gone and it's mm -hmm. starting to rot away from the bottom up. Right. So that one obviously has to come down. I think we'd, we would want to look at the other ones and see where the foliage is and which way they were kind of leaning. Okay. But that's something that uh, that uh, John Woods and, and the commission can take a look at once, you're tr once you've taken your four down. Okay. All right. So um, it was funny. I just I drove in the driveway. He's standing right there. So I said, <laughs> well, I've got a question. There you go. Uh, so... Um, uh, does anybody, either of you who weren't there, have any questions? No, I'm familiar with the trees in Cobb and Cobb. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds pretty standard. Yeah. Okay. Right. Safety and so I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, allow the removal of the four trees we looked at today. It's 78 Crystal Lake Drive. So 73. Hmm? 73. What did I say? 78. No, that's okay. Oh, there's an eight right above the three. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. The eyes are gone. 73 Crystal Lake Drive. 
So moved. I'll All right. Second. All right. It's been uh, moved by Ann, seconded by Carl. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Good luck. Okay. You're all set. Um, I just had a quick question. Is that um, is there a document I can get? Just because, as I yeah, mentioned, yeah, I was going to say I'll send you something in writing tomorrow. Okay. Um, I believe I have your email address. Your you last name um, is Enman. Is that exactly. correct? Exactly. Okay. That's a good. Okay. Job. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'll send you something in writing tomorrow that you can show your tree company. Okay. Um, so that way, if they have any questions, you're, okay. you're all set. Yeah, they were just they knew they knew the protocol, so they weren't going to do it without that. So okay, okay. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Me. Okay. Anything with the trees in the back or next to the pond? That will be, have to be another decision. It would. Oh, no, no, okay. No. Okay. Um, I can tell. I would like m more members of the board to take a look at it. Okay. Yeah, those all ones right. are much closer to the pond. They're kind of acting as more of a buffer. Um, from your, you know, the usable part of your property to the resource, the wetland resource. Um, again, they're not as close to your house. They don't have branches leaning over your house. So they're not, um, you know, we didn't take a close look at them, but um, at this point we think, you know, they're not as much of a threat as the ones. Right, and, and the root structure down by the, the lake is very important in holding that lake bed, mm -hmm. that lake bank together. So. Uh, you know, if that if, when that time comes, we'll take a look again. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Next up, continued public hearings. Uh, we did have one more update oh. on oh, oh, Gary Street. Street. Yeah, yeah, right. Gary Street. I wanted to keep Gary on the phone all night. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there, Gary? Yeah, do you want me to handle this one? Um, so I'll just read really briefly um, the email that we got from um, ECR. So we got an email from Brad Holmes. Um, he said, Hi Gary, I spoke with Chris Mazelweski this morning regarding his progress at 17 Wareham Street. Chris informed me that he has moved the shed. The front fence near Wareham Street has been removed and he is working on moving the other sections of the fence per the plan. The goats are now secured in the back pen. There is some fence to be removed in the lower wetland sections, but those sections are underwater with the recent flooding. Um, once the flooding receives, he recedes, he plans to remove those sections of the fence. Please keep this email with your files. We will keep you posted. So, kind of just notifying us that they're, you know, doing that work with the um, removal of the fences, keeping the goats secured away from the wetland, and they have moved the shed. Um, so, I, I believe that's our only update, Gary. If you want to add anything, yeah. Um, um, he's got till July 2024 to, you know, get everything done. Um, the commission did ask him um, to have all the fencing out of the 65-foot buffer area by the March 31st, 2024. But if he's got flooding issues, you know, he's got a you know he's got a good reason not to have it all done. So that's where it stands. Thanks, okay. Gary. Yes, yeah, someone wanted that. Was it David who wanted that date, March 31st? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I trust Brad to, to keep on top of uh, the, the... It's the 10th now, so they got 21 more days. That's three weeks. Um, so, I, you know, hopefully the flooding recedes. Um, well, March 31st. March. March. Oh, March. Yeah, March. yeah. yeah so he's, he's, he's 10 days late. He's past the date. Okay. It is what it is with the flooding. Rain. We but we've had a lot of rain. I can't yeah. right. It's unbelievable flooding. Yeah. And the first thing that, that caught everyone's attention was the fact that the fence went down into the river. <laughs> so if that river's that high be, right uh, now. kind of a surprising... Yes, it was. The second thing was the goat size. But. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Gary. Yep. All right. Um, now moving on, sorry, to the continued public hearings. 276 Meadow Street. Since uh, this is uh, continued, I don't have to read the whole thing anymore. Uh, it's SE 126678. Um, How are you tonight? Good, well. Good thank thanks. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
keep them. Well, you got options. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> options are good. Good on options. <laughs> Good evening. For the record, my name is Zach Pasinski. I'm a professional engineer at Bracken Engineering. I'm here this evening on behalf of Barbara Spaulding. Uh, this was a project that was in front of the commission back in February. Uh, just a quick recap for some of the members. Uh, Mrs. Spaulding is looking at doing a uh, two-bedroom uh, house for a potential third bedroom uh, over on uh, Meadow Street with actually building the house off of Bates Road. So at the time, uh, Don Brackett had presented the project to the commission. Um, commission had actually asked us to look at getting all the work grading and outside the 65 foot buffer. So since then, we've gone back, looked at the drawing board a little bit, talked with um, Kevin Ford from the health department uh, to review options on this. So based on conversations with the health department, um, we felt best to keep the septic system up off of Bates Road, keep the house where it was proposed, and then look at filling in the wetland system in the back. So two options in front of you tonight. Uh, option one was to fill in the um, area in the back, uh, which would require about 1,620 square feet of rep uh, replication, and that would get all of the grading work uh, in the house and all the structures outside of the 65-foot buffer. Um, that would also still require a variance, though, we wanted to talk to the commission about, uh, about maintaining the well um, where it was previously proposed. That would still be within the 65-foot buffer, and then the trenching uh, across to the proposed house. Uh, the well work could be done off of Meadow Street, so very limited impact, and then just trenching uh, over to uh, the house. If the commission uh, still felt that that work should be outside of the 65 foot buffer, the alternative would be to fill in uh, an additional 1300 square feet. So again, we're just trying to limit the amount of filling and replication if at all possible. So option one would be our preferred option on this going forward. And that's what we want to review with the commission tonight. And I will sign in. Is this the one uh, we're talking about replicating something somewhere? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you have the original plan? I do. Oh, you have one too. Is your thing meta? Yeah. If you if you wouldn't mind, I just want to take a look at it, refresh my memory. It's been a little while. Still well within the 100 foot buffer. Still within the 100 foot buffer. I mean, 100 percent of the house is still in the 100 foot buffer. Yes, because the septic system yeah. will require up from up there. Okay. Do you want to? Does anyone want to see the original? If you don't mind. I just take a quick look.
Yeah. It's option one, yeah. But it seems to be option two. It doesn't need a variance. Um, so they, they say the, um, the dwelling is outside of the 66 um, <coughs> in the 100, but this isn't a cranberry dog, so the jury of the second dwelling would be for a single family dwelling within 100 feet of a cranberry dog, specifically. This is, you know, the regular wetland area. They're keeping it outside of 65 feet. Um, that's, that's the variance that they're seeking. That's or, that's Congress file. Right. So, yeah, yeah, the that's the variances nice only deal with harbors by law and state. Okay. You know, those regulations don't apply there. Variances is just the issuing of the notice of intent um, would be the you know, permitting that. <coughs> that makes sense. Option two doesn't seem to, the way it's drawn, doesn't seem to add anything. Uh, it, it changes the location of the 65 foot zone in an area that you're not doing anything anyway. Just minor trenching for the water line. Right. What I'd like to ask you if you can try to do is with the additional 1,300 square feet, plus or minus, if there's a way that you could reconfigure that so that the 65, see, see the 65 foot, uh, well the new, the new buffer zone on, on both options, um, what it doesn't do is it doesn't, unless you didn't put it in here, it doesn't change the location of the 100 foot buffer, or, or would it? I would pull the 100 foot buffer back with it. Okay, because we generally, and you can check our records on this, we generally do not um, approve a house that is 100% within the 100 foot. So if this has to be redrawn showing where the, where the revised 100 foot is so we can see how much of the house is outside the 100 foot uh, because um, I might have mentioned uh, at, at your original hearing or it might have been at a subsequent one. Uh, last year the town of Carver town meeting voted to strengthen our bylaw to make it um, more stringent to uh, alter uh, things within um, the 100 foot, uh, just a little bit, and, and certainly in the 65 foot. So my question is, um, if I can just come back and show you. And then I'll bring it back and show you. If there is some way here to get that, that would bring this line in here and with, with this probably a little bit straighter here or even even lower here. So I'm wondering if it's because your, your option of doing it, this sort of triangle doesn't really help, but if the same amount of square feet, if we could just oops, pinch that a little bit more. So right now, if we were to take the 35 feet off of the 65 foot buffer, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, I just kind of like to move that 100 foot. It's, it, you know, it's not this particular uh, project, but it's all the ones that will come after. And we've been fairly consistent in, in what we've done. And I just want to make sure we keep that. And it's going to do something like that where I can get like 50% of the house. So I'd have to pull that further back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, are we looking for the house to be completely outside of it? Not completely. Okay, if I can get a majority, we'll look at that. Okay. Yes, that's what I would be looking at. Okay. okay. Alright, so basically what I, what I suggested was that we put more of the uh, replication area here. So, uh, so right now we're about 30% of the house is outside of the 100 foot buffer. Okay. Based on this programming. 
Right. But if, if instead of instead of doing the area here where they're going to fill, we did this instead. That brings the sixty and the, and would bring it subsequently bring the hundred foot. So more of the house would be outside of the hundred. And that that sits well with what our rulings have been in the past. Keep you consistent at least. Right. Yeah, because this can move to go there. So that's definitely that corner. Yep, we can pull that back. Yep. Okay. I think we have an option. What's that? I think we have something we can work with. I do too. I I thank you for doing this. Um, when you come back, make sure that the that the revised hundred foot is on there too. We'll show the hundred foot. And just then we'll so I, I can see where it goes right through the house. Um, but we generally like to keep as much of the of the house out of the hundred foot as possible. Uh, we realize that there are certain cases where that that isn't possible, but uh, we do ask. Um, we do ask that the, the builder slash homeowner work with us to try to make it the best it can be. And we've had a lot of those um, situations uh, with the new houses on Indian Street where things have been reconfigured and, and adjusted to get more of the house outside the 100. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you'll call. Uh, when do you think you'll... Uh, I'm going to try to get it. I'll talk to our mail about the upcoming filing. Probably the twenty fourth, though. We should for that, or the first next one after that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, ask uh, ask for a vote that we continue until the twenty fourth. If you if you're not ready, we'll continue it again. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, continue the hearing at two seventy six Meadow Street. Is this a public hearing? What's that? Is this a public hearing? Yes. May I speak? Yes, you may. I'm sorry. I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Shea, please, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just curious. Um, Connie Shea, 148 Plymouth Street in Carver. I'm just curious. Are you going to do a site walk on this property? We've done one. You have? Um, is the septic and the well both proposed within 100 foot? Um, uh, I think neither one of them are in the 100 foot. Isn't that going to exasperate any um, issues in regards to disturbance within the wetlands or the buffer area? I'm, I'm sorry. Could just say that again, please. Isn't the, isn't having the? Is, did you say well? The well is within the 65 foot. Within the 65 yes. foot. Yes. Isn't that going to considerably exasperate the um, issues that would arise in protection of the wetland? We generally do not, uh, we do not um, think that wells, we expect wells to have a 30 year life and, and um, once they're put in, we've, we've seen that uh, wildlife and, and uh, natural life comes back over it. It's not, a, it's not a road. Right, but it's a straw directly down into that particular feed system and aquifer that, that, that helps feed and drain from the pond. That, 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 I'm, just, I'm just asking this question because I'm concerned because uh, the 65 foot is a no use zone and, and we already know the state's coming down hard on the septic systems in regards to Cape Cod and portions of South Carver and Cape Cod and some of these septic systems are going to be $60,000 just to upgrade them to what the new standards are and anything that we do within the 100 foot buffer zone that we we shouldn't be doing is is just helping to exasperate the situation but all right, but well, that's all that that's all I have to say thank you very much for your time okay right well okay that's fine the septic systems outside the hundred foot so that's really board of health and uh, etc uh, we have we have historically allowed wells within the 65 feet because we feel that once the uh, once the well is is uh, is put into the ground um, it's, it's going to be deep enough to pull from the aquifer and whether it's uh, 60 feet away from a, a, a source or 100 feet away from a source, it's still the same aquifer, so it's really not going to affect the ground level, the, the topography level of water. So that's basically the way we've ruled on uh, almost all of our, our wells in the, uh, in the past. All right? Okay. So anyway, I'll entertain a motion to continue uh, this public hearing until uh, Wednesday, April 24th. So moved. Second. Curtis, make the motion. Carl seconded. All right. Uh, 
It's been moved and seconded to uh, continue this till the 24th of April. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. You all set for the 24th. And if you if call Emil, if you can't make it, we'll push you back to the next one. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. South Main Street, Lakeview Street. We were there today for a site visit. Um, I, before before you gentlemen present, I just want to uh, I want to uh, explain why we're here on this today. Um, this is one of three lots along South Main Street uh, between. Um, Lakeview Street and the South Carver Fire Department, uh, primarily. Um, this is a piece of property that the town had, the, the select board had voted not to um, purchase uh, with using right of uh, first refusal when the property came out of um, uh, 61A agricultural uh, zoning. Um, and uh, there have been signs along the, on all three um, lots uh, that a house was going to be built there. So I was, um, I, go, I go by there every day on my way to the post office. And I was just waiting for the, um, the, the builder to come in as an applicant uh, about you know, whichever of the first of the three homes was being built. And one day coming back from the post office, I saw a bulldozer. And I was uh, surprised and came in and uh, was talking to the building inspector. And I believe you showed up at the same time We said hello. Um, it turns out that uh, a building permit had been issued for this. And in hindsight, uh, it was issued mistakenly um, because of the Carver a uh, zoning bylaw where, which gives jurisdiction to our commission to uh, require a variance for any residential structure within a hundred feet of a cranberry bog. It does not delineate between wetland and upland bogs. It specifically says cranberry bog. So um, because the building permit has been given um, and work had started, that in effect created a hardship, uh, which is one of the reasons to grant a variance. Normally, our, our rules of the Carver Conservation Commission are, is that we do not issue an after the fact notice of intent. If someone does something that, where they should have come to us and didn't, we have the right to stop work and tell them to put it back the way they wanted to. In this particular case, they had a building permit that was given to them by the town of Carver. It never came in front of us, so we never had a chance to make any rulings on it. Um, that being said, um, it still is within 100 feet of a cranberry box. So I think what we need to uh, discuss tonight uh, is, first of all, the, the after the fact notice of intent. Um, and there is no NOI, there is no DEP number because this is strictly a Carver bylaw issue, which is why uh, Emil has given it the number CARV-001. Um, so, um, I think what we need to look at tonight is what kind of orders of conditions we can put in regarding the area between the resident, the residential home and the Cranberry Bog to protect that slope and, and, the, uh, and the wetlands or the, the, the bogs themselves. So that being said, did, did gentlemen. You read, yeah, did you read it in? Oh, it's a new one. I'm sorry. Here we go. South Main Street, Lakeview Street, Carver Bylaw File CARV001. 
Notice is hereby given in accordance with the Carver Wetlands Protection Bylaw Citation 9.2 that a public hearing will be held at 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, April 10th, 2024, in meeting room number one at the Carver Town Hall to hear the notice of intent submitted by K&G Development Corporation for the construction of a single family dwelling with a deck, staircase, and any applicable grading and landscaping within 100 feet of a cranberry bog being protected under the Carver Wetlands Protection Bylaw and will require a variance from the bylaw. This project is located at the corner of South Main Street and Lakeview Street, Lot 1, Carver, Massachusetts, Assessors Map 8, Lot 29-1. All interested parties are invited to attend. Okay. So, now you can go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, uh, my name is Rob Carlazon from Grady Consulting. Um, obviously, you kind of explained the whole situation um, that we're kind of in right now. Um, I just want to also just add the septic system and the proposed well are outside the 100 foot setback to the bar. We did a site walk today. We saw that. Um, saw yeah. the location of us. Um, the foundation is is currently poured. Um, and it's in, and we actually already did a foundation certification, so it's it's in the same exact spot as proposed on the plan. Um, as far as your next point, as far as um, the area in between one, the house and the bog. Oh. Do we have copies of the plan? Yep. Can we hand them out, please, so that we're all looking at them? That's a little far away. Go ahead. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. Um, so you probably saw on your site walk. Uh, there's there's actually three three lots in a row here. They're they're vacant lots. Um, I wouldn't call them even grassed. They're sort of rough veget. It's it's been disturbed in the past by whoever you know previous owners. Yeah, whatever so grew when the trees came down. Yeah, so there's some some light vegetation scattered throughout. Um, I'd say the existing slope uh, to, in the rear of the house is somewhat stable. Um, uh, Bob, uh, I think la a couple weeks ago, um, installed a straw wattle, um, which is highlighted in brown, um, just to prevent any kind of runoff. Uh, coming from construction, but running down the slope uh, would hit the straw wattle before entering the bog. Um, I don't think anybody asked him to do it. It was just one of those proactive things just to uh, put in place. Um, so as far as that slope, um, I think uh, the builder here, Bob, was uh, just looking to, uh, at grass and lawn area, um, which would provide stabilization of the slope. Um, we do have some uh, proposed grading on either side of the house, uh, just to uh, have water pitch away from the foundation. Um, you kind of see there's sort of two swales, uh, one on the right, one on the left, um, where any sort of, any sort of uh, drainage would uh, go into the swales and sort of uh, sheet flow uh, down the bank um, and in the direction of the bog. Um, from what I understand, um, I've been in contact with Bob about this. Um, I don't believe very little to no stormwater runoff has even made it to the straw wattle. Um, but that's just from uh, Bob and uh, a few of site visits from myself, just in uh, foundation certs and surveys and things like that. So, Yeah, it looked like the, uh, the edge of the bog is higher than the, the easement road. So, yep. yeah, there didn't seem... There was water settled in that on the road yep. as opposed to going over the edge. Yep. Um. All right. Was that, um, as I mentioned, Ann and Emil and I went out there today. There are there are um, rock retaining walls on either side of the walk-in basement, uh, which they were framing today, um, that um, aren't on these plans. Um, but again, um, there was a building permit for this. Um, it's not on the plans, I don't know. Are these the plans that were submitted or part of the plans that were submitted to the building department? Okay. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're necessary and um, I don't know when, when the uh, idea became that it would be a walkout. Was that sort of after the fact? Or all the way along? Okay. All right. Um, so, um, 
How many bedrooms is this house? Three? Uh, three. Three bedrooms. Yep. Okay. So the, uh, the most likely candidate for a, uh, to purchase this would be a family. What my concern is, and it's not only this lot, it's on any lot uh, that borders any kind of a wetland, is that um, a, a seeded lawn today becomes the kids' playground tomorrow and becomes all dirt and dust and, and ravines and um, they put a sandbox down there and a swing set and all of a sudden it's, you know, you've got things within a wetland. Um, That's okay. The couple that, excuse me, the couple that are buying this house, their kids are grown. Would okay. you so state a, your a, name a, for oh, the sorry. record? Bob Goslin. Okay. So, so, so just a bigger swing set. Yes. <laughs> they do. I'm sure they have grandchildren, but it's just the two of them. Okay. All right. But I mean, that, that's my concern. And it's not specifically this house. It's, it's, it's any, any new dwelling that's, that's close to a wetland. Um, the, um, the original um, survey that was done indicated that this cranberry bog that you're abutting, um, or actually are now part owner of, uh, is an upland bog. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And how was that um, determined? So that was using uh, like old USGS topographic maps, and then we also had a wetland uh, specialist, uh, John Zimmer, uh, come out and confirm. Um, and he had he gave us a well, it's a sketch report uh, confirming that as well. Okay, um, I looked at the USGS from I think 1962, and there was a bog indicated there. It wasn't this shape, but it was there, which leads me to believe that at least some portion of this is a wetland bog. And there was another section of the bog further to the south along the stream that also was in that 1962 USGS. And there are also aerial photos, not satellite, aerial photos uh, of that area showing that there what appear to be bogs. Um, so in in this particular case, for this lot, because everything that you're doing has already been approved and signed off on, um, I'm uh, I'm in, inclined to um, maybe see what we can do about keeping the hillside more intact. Uh, but just on the on the uh, future two lots, uh, I would like to see um, I would like to see a little bit more detail from your um, your soil samples uh, because I believe that hidden somewhere in the in the largeness of that bog there are two smaller wetland bogs, and that would that would change the jurisdiction. Uh, if in fact um, any anything that what you're planning on doing, including grading uh, in the back, would would fall under our jurisdiction as far as uh, other other things we can do uh, regarding protecting that bank. So um, what I would r request that you do, uh, and this is something that mandate for people who are clearing within a, uh, a bordering vegetated wetland, a natural uh, BVW, uh, is that at the 65 foot, every 50 to 100 feet, they put in a, a four by four post with a badge on it, say, stating that this is a, a, a wetland, sort of as a kind of warning or, or a protected area sort of as a warning to, you know, try to be as, as careful as you can uh, 
between here and the edge of the bog because it, it's you know it's it's part of the ecosystem and the closer you get to water the more critical it is that these uh, these these plants um, absorb any fertilizers and uh, I'm I'm wondering if it you might consider uh, a what was it a, a conservation a seed conservation mix. seed mix Something uh, like that. Which meadow, is mo which is mobile or something. It could be either grasses or you know meadow um, type plantings. Um, beyond that, 65 foot area is kind of one of the things I discussed. Um, right. It's it, a conservation seed mix is mowable. It's just not doesn't look like a golf course. It's not a, a thick like a Bermuda grass or something like that. So um, that's something we would. Uh, we would like you to uh, say you would do, and uh, and then um, then oh, we so, can move so ahead with your it, other. If it helps, I'm I'm going to be putting all the downspouts into the ground. Okay. There'll be no run off the roof. That's good. Yeah, I'm 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 more worried, and I you know I understand that you said that the 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 buyer has grown children and possibly grandchildren. I just uh, I'm. Uh, People have a tendency to take advantage of, of things when they can. You know, like all of a sudden there might be a patio there, and um, you know, either pavers or concrete or something. And and you know, next after that is uh, you know a, a, a fire pit, and the next thing you know, that whole area is now part of the uh, living area as opposed to a protected area. Which is kind of what we're looking to do here, even even though it's an upland bog. Um, that, you know, they're they're not turning off the water; that they are uh, making it. Um, they're going to still uh, farm that. So, um, these aren't going to be the last owners of the house either. Right. I mean, we got to right. we got to look down the road in perpetuity. Yeah. Who, you know, yes. Eventually, we got to think there's going to be a young family living there. Right. I would I would think. So. Um, Emil, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, so I, I visited the site with the commissioners today. Um, I think it's, uh, it's unfortunate that the building permit was issued before we were able to review it. As, you know, and the Conservation Commission, I should say, was able to review it. Um, you know, however, that being said, you know, the foundation's in. I, you know, I typically look at uh, a situation, you know, like I'm, I'm pretty new to the town of Carver, but uh, you know, in my opinion, like a wet uh, a cranberry bog is functioning as a wetland, whether it be an upland cranberry bog or a cranberry bog. So, you know, in, in the interest of protecting that cranberry bog um, and the resource area that is there, um, you know, allowing for a buffer buffer vegetation between the, uh, you know, house and the area where, you know, the, the um, people are gonna be, you know, doing most of their activities um, driveways, septic systems, everything like that. Um, you know, having buffer vegetation is always a you know a positive thing, which is why I discussed with um, Savory about the conservation seed mix. Um, you know, I think it's a positive thing to have that if they are to issue a um, order of conditions for a project like this. Um, you know, I in my you know opinion, um, you know. It's a, definitely a permittable project. It's you know it's a house. It's largely outside of um, the 65 um, and 100 foot buffers. Um, there is you know um, you know a little bit of disturbance to to the buffer zones, but um, like I said, I think it's a permittable project. Um, I'm I'm pretty new to the town, so I'm going to let you know the commission kind of you know handle um, you know this situation how they um you know see fit um but that is you know kind of would be my advice is um you know protecting that buffer zone um with some kind of vegetation to hold the slope um and you know it doesn't have to be a whole bunch of shrubs and trees but um you know a nice erosion control seed mix um, meadow uh, mix something like that would you know, I think benefit a project like this. Obviously, we don't have a landscape plan here. We just have a site plan, so um, there is definitely room for for uh, making those improvements. 
Mr. Chairman, I yes. some thoughts. Um, so I have received more than 10 calls or pings on this because people are saying, why are you building a house that's almost on a cranberry bog? Unfortunately, it's on a very visible road in our town, so like everyone has noticed. Um, and I'm concerned about precedent, just you know, granting this. I do think there are things that you guys can do that can minimize the impact to the threat to the wetland. I do think that is a wetland. Is there anything we can do to, can we do testing on that, more testing on that? Well, at, at this point on this particular uh, home, <clears throat> the, the, the permits were issued. Um, I would like to, I would like to see uh, a more detailed testing of the, of the cranberry bog itself uh, throughout it uh, to see if it, anywhere can be located a, uh, you know, a, a, a whatever remnants there are of the original wetland bog. Uh, the um, the aerial photography shows uh, it's pretty clear that these were um, part of it was a wetland bog or two two wetland bogs that have been enlarged to make this one big bog. Um, so that's basically all we can do on that. Um, and the the first question that you were asked is why why are we allowing this? We didn't. Right. And that's the answer. We didn't. A mistake was made at the town level, which granted a building permit in error, which in effect created a hardship for the builder because they spent money doing something that they believed was legal right. because they had the paperwork in hand. Yeah. And that is one of the... Um, that is one of the reasons where we are allowed to give a variance for a building. So uh, the mistake led to a condition which we probably would have allowed anyway, but we did not allow this. This, did not, this should have come in front of us, it did not. My, in looking at this, had this come in front of us, my guess is that very similar to what we just did with the, with the one on... on uh, That's fine. On um, Meadow Yeah, Meadow. Meadow. Yeah, it's, there, she's on that back road. But anyway, uh, I probably would have, uh, in this case, I probably would have asked that the uh, the house be slid a little bit to the right and moved a little bit closer to the road so that less than 50% of the house was uh, within the 100 feet. Right now, it looks like a little bit more, probably 60, 65% of the house. Yeah, easily. Is is in the is in the hundred foot, so that's probably what I would have asked to have done, had had it come through proper channels, and I think it's a, it would have been an easy fix. Um, so uh, it 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 was allowed on paper. It wasn't allowed by conservation. Yeah. So that that's your answer. answer. It just the mistake doesn't change the law. So. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But but. Um, it also, the, the law states that hardship is one of the reasons to grant a variance. And by virtue of us letting them to continue or letting them to start and spend money to put in the foundation and everything that's there, that creates a hardship. Granted, we were the ones who created that hardship, or not we, but the town was. So, um, uh, in, in this particular case, there's no, in my opinion, there's no other Medication. solution. You know, at, saying, what, at what point did they realize it was a problem? And how far along were they when that happened? How have, had they been poured footings? Had they poured the whole foundation? Like they just started framing today or yesterday. I'm just kind of curious where, where the hardship started. Could it have been stopped? Should the job have been stopped? previous I brought it to Gary's attention on I, I don't remember the date I saw the bulldozer I came in I met with Bob just by happenstance I was talking to uh, our, our building inspector and he looked over my shoulder and said here's Bob now and, <laughs> and we talked about it a little bit 
and um, and the building inspector showed me the building permit with Gary's signature on it. Uh, so at that point, um, I guess my question is: Does the permit cause the hardship, or does the work that was done cause the hardship? Because if they if they knew there was an issue, and they went on their own before they came to us, like they, they said, if they, it was only in the planning process, permits been issued, I get that, that was done prior to. But if none of the work had been done, is that the hardship or is the permit the hardship? Because I don't see the permit as a hardship, I see the actual work that's been done is considered a hardship. So my question is, when they became aware that there was a problem, at what point of the project were they at? Earth had been turned. Okay. So. Has concrete been poured? No, not at that point, not when I brought it up. But so, so my question is, where does the, when does the hardship stop? They had, except for the point that they burned some diesel and, and some man hours, is that enough of a hardship or the actual pouring of concrete? I could see, I could see pouring a foundation, that's a hardship. I don't see, I can't, I, I don't see an issuance of a permit a hardship. I can't think of any situation where this has happened before. Right. Um, this is, the entire house is outside the 65, most of, 35% of it is outside the 100. Um, I, I spoke to Gary about it, but the building permit was there, they were working, they had, they had excavated the, the hole for the foundation. Um, I asked Gary to look into it. We did, and and we talked about it, and we felt that it, you know, and after the fact, NOI uh, was probably the best way to go um, on this one. But also, it would serve notice on the other two lots going forward. I'm assuming building permits haven't been issued for the other two lots yet. Uh, no, because because I I told the you know I I pointed out the bylaw. Right. To the building inspector. Well, I don't know. Sometimes builders will, they'll get three builder permits at the same time. I don't. I don't I, believe I, so. I don't understand. I, yeah, I didn't think so. I think we talked about that when we met. That the other three. So, um, so no, the other three, the other two, the other two have not will been come in front of us. Right. Um, and and for those other two, it, the additional uh, soil samples to try to locate the original wetland bog will be part of, of, of what needs to uh, happen here. And the third lot, which isn't on this plan, the one further to the uh, south is adjacent to a river. Right. So there's an even more. Even the, more. Yeah, so. so I, I guess, don't know if I guess my question, I'm, I'm sorry, Ian. I guess my question is why wasn't a cease and desist order placed as soon as we realized there was a problem until we could get this hashed out? And why was, you know, I, I, it just, that, that, it, Concerns me that we didn't do that, or somebody didn't do that. I know cease and desist orders get put on buildings all the time when they when they found that they are in violation of something. Right. Things happen. I get it. It was a mistake. It should have been signed off on. It should have been approved. Right. But um, again, I go back to if no concrete was poured yet. Again, we had no precedent to, to I, set and the I rules. I get it. I get it. Maybe then that's. I guess that's the reason <clears throat> I'm asking the question because there's no precedent. Right. We should have stopped and made a precedent or figured out where we were. Right, but I think by, by, I think by virtue of this being sort of the first of these things, hopefully there, it, people will be cognizant and it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, second is that, um, you know, that um, I think being aware that, that, that these, well, I just, I just don't think the building permit will be erroneous, erroneously issued anymore. Um, this was... Uh, this was a, a case where um, the the uh, engineering firm didn't pick up on our bylaw correctly, and uh, and the the building inspector and conservation agent uh, didn't either. Which is sad because it's clearly written in the bylaw. It's uh, <laughs> it's like on the first or second page. <laughs> I knew I knew it. I knew it right away. Um, but um, I, I think that, uh, you know, it, 
in this case, it, the earth was, the work was being done, the, earth, the hole was dug and, and uh, um, you know, it was the day I saw the bulldozer, I, you know, people stockpile bulldozers waiting for a work to start. I was still waiting for, for the applicant to come in front of us. Right. Until I saw the hole dug. Oh, and, and you did what you were supposed to do. You yeah. went to the builder department. Yes. So. Like I said, it, it, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, it, it, again, I, my my issue was where does the hardship get created? Not at a piece of paper in my mind. It's when, well, the actual building process, and I'm not talking about digging a hole, because holes can be filled back in. I understand that. Uh, in 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 my opinion, at the time, and and Gary's concurrence was that the the hole being dug was uh, was a start of something which may have created some legal ramifications afterwards because the, the, the owner can go and say, I've, I spent money because I have this paper signed by everybody saying I can. No, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at both sides. I'm just... Yeah, I, I understand that. But um, hopefully this won't happen again. Um, Emil is certainly aware of what the yeah, laws are now. I would just say I, I definitely appreciate where, where you're coming from, Carl, um, in terms of, you know, like a cease and desist order would have been a really, you know, good option in this case because, you know, you guys are working within the jurisdiction for the, you know, the bylaw. And, you know, you really should, the project should have stopped there before we come to this point and got these permits, the permit from the Conservation Commission. You know, this may be only a bylaw filing. It's not a filing with the State Department. Um, but, you know, these permits should have been in hand before you, you know, continued on with the foundation, with the, you know, that ongoing work. Um, you know, that that didn't happen. That's not the case in this case, that the agent came to you guys and, you know, said, you know, I'm issuing a stop of work order and this work has to stop now. Um, so, you know, at this, that's kind of where we are now. This was Gary. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this This was Gary's last kind of, like, um, he was just leaving at this time. So, you know, a lot of stuff was going on. Well, well, the out that Savory and I, when we first discussed this, um, instead of a cease and desist uh, because uh, the uh, builder had ordered stuff and blah, 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 we said he'd work at his own risk. So to... Um, to Carl saying the cease and desist, we did kick that around. Well, the we fact, did. Gary, that you just said he went at his own risk, knew that there was a risk that he was taking by continuing the work. Yes. Pardon me? It, it, he, clearly the builder knew there's a calculated risk that he was taking on oh, by yeah, continuing the work. Oh, yeah, that's why it was, you know, and he agreed, you know, to continue at his own risk. I would have liked to have seen him in good faith stop and come before the board and commission and try well, to get this hashed you know, out this instead of sad right now i know you know, I know well, hindsight's 2020 20. kicked around a, a cease and desist but um we didn't we didn't do it so uh, there was a lot of failures on this on and on several levels as far as right. i'm concerned <laughs> well i think yeah. that we need to look at lessons learned here um i think that uh you know there were errors on both sides the fact that the bylaw wasn't discovered when the plans were done and then was exacerbated by the fact that it wasn't indicated or wasn't remembered by the people issuing permits. Um, so, you know. Yeah, I'll just say one more thing. Um, you know, your bylaw does allow you to have the option to continue if you feel like you need more information. Um, you're, you know, we're looking at the three lots, like, um, you know, they're going to have to come before us and do more soil sampling in order to determine, you know, where their buffers are. Um, you know, you guys could continue this, ask for those extra soil samples like you're, you know, looking for for the other lots that are coming up and, um, you know, ask that they, you know, get, get a little bit more information on whether this is an upland or a wetland bog before you actually issue, you know, this, um, bylaw permit you know I, I will leave that um, up to you but that is an option that you guys have so that you're not you know going um, you know too far and um, just confusing right. and I will say more. I will say that there are 
cranberry bogs in Carver that are half and half. <laughs> They're wetlands and upland. That makes it upland. my job very difficult. Right. <laughs> and uh, frankly, the, in in looking at the at the aerial photographs and the uh, USGS uh, maps from the early '60s, um, if I would have to venture a guess, I would say that the wetlands bog, if it in fact was one or is one, is not any is farther away from the dwelling than mm -hmm. the current outline of the of the big bog. It yeah, was, I haven't looked at any of those historical yeah. aerials, so I'm you know I'm not going to make a so, judgment one way or the other. My my feeling is that in this particular case, if this if this <clears throat> bog had not been enlarged and the original bog that was on the maps and on the aerial photographs was all that remained, that we wouldn't be sitting here today because this house would be outside the hundred foot. Oh, I get it. Yeah. So. And I, I will give you a little personal story. This isn't the first time this has happened. Um, when my house was built on Meadow Street, work had started. Conservation put a stop and desist, uh, cease and desist on it and made the builder come in front of them to get a very, to get approval to build. So mm -hmm. this isn't something that's out of the ordinary. This has, does right. happen. You know, uh -huh. it just, it's ha it, that was in 2002, so that was a long time ago. There was, a, you know, none of us were sitting on the board at that point. Um, but when my dad was building my house, the historic district commission put a cease and desist yeah. on it. So, like I said, I, I'm in the building trades. Well, I understand well, cease and they they happen all the time. It's just, right. it's just part of doing business. Right. But my problem, my, again, my issue was, I wished as the builder you would stop what you were doing at that point instead of rolling the dice, backing us against the, you know, I feel like now we're backed against the wall, we have to approve this. And mm -hmm. I, I don't like that feeling, that bothers me a lot. Mm -hmm. If there was a cease and desist issue, I would have stopped, but they- No, I get they, it, and they, I understand, you were an issue one. Do it. In, like I said, but in good faith, knowing that there was an issue, knowing that you were in violation of a bylaw, even though you had a permit in hand, in good faith, if you had stopped at that point, I'd feel a lot better about the conversation we're having right now. But you didn't, you pushed, you know, you, you rolled the dice, and like I said, I feel like our backs are against the wall. We have no choice. We have to approve this. And that's a bad precedent to set. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like, I feel like I have a choice. I don't have to approve this. Um, I did take an oath to uphold these laws. So I, I am kind of intrigued by the idea of a continuance because at least we could you know, get some scientific data on that bog. We don't have to have this question about what is it an upland bog or a wetland bog. At least it's more data for us to use. Well, it, as opinion. I said, it can be both. I know it can, yeah. But it would be good to know, right? Yes, I suppose so. Um, so what is, the, um, what is the flavor of the board? Do we want to continue this and look for more data? Do we want to have a, more soil samples done to see if we can locate what the original wetland bog was? I'm not comfortable going forward with it, to be honest with you, at this point. I really am not. Okay. I'm interested in continuance, at least, and get more data. That would be great. All right. Um. <laughs> I'm kind of in agreement with Carl. Like I feel like we're, we're you know, our hands are tied here, and, and the, I don't like the way that feels. But I'd like it to, is I'd what like it to is, find guess, out: is there a legal definition of what when the hardship starts? Is it at the issue of a permit, or is it the issue of the construction, or is it the issue when you dig a, dig a hole? As I it? said, I don't think this has ever come up before. Well, when, I'd, when like to, I'd like to know where we stand. Well, if we have a continuance, okay. we can talk to legal counsel, can we? I would think. Yeah, I, I would have to be in our bylaws a definition of a hardship, and I don't think it's there. Don't I, I, no, it is there because it's financial. There are three terms, one of them being financial. So, in effect, when you uh, when you spend a penny, it becomes a hardship. Now, granted, there are different levels of how much you right. spend, but uh, like I said, I think a case can be made. So, so we want to continue. All right. Can we, uh, can you have a soil guy uh, just do some more test boring and see if he can locate anywhere where there is a, an outline? Um, 
because if there is if there is a, a wetland bog hidden in there, then that really uh, that would determine. I mean, we still have the hundred feet for this, mm -hmm. but um, if it removes any other jurisdiction that we may or may not have, right? Um, then I think that would have to be weighed into our decision. It'll help us make our decision how we're going to deal with that banking. Okay. You do have. You said you. Yeah. You have soil samples. You had somebody do. Uh, we did soil samples for the septic system, which is standard. Um, for this particular lot, we are. Test flows were well outside the. Yeah, uh, so you were nowhere near. You were nowhere near the no, near the bog when you. Great sand. So and there's and no. There's it, you it, have nothing that says other than the aerial photos that you indicate on the plan. That it's it's an upland bog because of that. Right. Well, you haven't done any soil samples in the bog area itself. Not in. Uh, we did do. So this is lot one. Um, lot three. We did do a test hole. Um, close to Indian Brook, mm -hmm. so the stream that it is, because um, we, we hit groundwater at like I think it was like four feet. Um, the rest of the holes we hit groundwater at a much deeper depth. Um, we, I would say, of all the test holes that we did on lot one, two, and three, um, I believe all of them were outside of the hundred foot setback to the bog. Um, we dug down, I think, probably 10 to 12 feet on each hole, um, and we were hitting sand all the way down to the bottom on all of them. Um, so we didn't have any evidence of what you're talking about, a buried bog. Right, but so, that area up there, you, I'm, I'm not surprised you dug the, you got the sand in 10 right. to 12 yeah. feet. That's, so that's, that's, what, we, well, that's I, what we've done. I would find those uh, aerial photographs, because the aerial photographs and the USGS map from early 60s match the where the where the USGS map says the bog is is where the p photo shows it okay. so I would kind of overlay that with what the bog uh, shape and and location is now and and see if you can find a delineation of where an upland and a and a wetland bog would would start with the, and with it may the, be in your interest to have a wetland scientist, professional wetland scientist, look at this. I mean, that would give you a lot more credibility than... Well, the, actually, we did have a wetland the, scientist come out, and that's what was in his report, that this was an upland bog. Okay. So we went off yep. of his... I may have missed so that So that's earlier. what I thought. So but what did he use to determine that? Um, <clears throat> pull up his, uh, we, we submitted um, I, I did see his that, report. So, yeah, so that's what we. But went I don't. I, did, I don't know what he did. To, I just know that you know you had a sign to say it was a upland bog, but I don't know. They took samples. And I don't know. How do you determine? How do you make that determination? I guess is the question. So I, I'd have to. I'd have to ask him. Yeah, have yeah, John. Have fair. John put something together. Put it, put together. Yeah, I can have. That would be. With John. That would be in their best interest. Because all it says here is based on aerial photography. Yep. So. So I, we, we might need to see a little bit more than just aerial photography. Uh, and I, I'd have to get permission from the bog owners to go up, to go on that property. I mean, the way this is, is I own part of the bog, but there's an easement 30 foot off the top of the, the bog for them to work the bog. And, so also so that nobody from the houses can access it. Okay. Well, I mean, that, so that's I think that's what you got to do. If you can rely on John Zimmer to come up with a reasonable answer, that would probably be the he's the botanist. Yeah. Well, if he could other, come. Other than that, maybe something. You know. Yeah. So we're going to continue this, or if if the commission right, so when, decides uh, to continue. When this, do you think you'll um, be able to? Uh, have this information for us? Um, I'd obviously have to check with uh, wetland scientist John, um, but I'll, I mean, I'll reach out to him okay. next day or two. I mean, so we All right, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to continue this till April 24th, and if you're not ready by then, we'll continue it again. Okay. All right. So um, this is an open hearing. Does any, is there anybody out there who would like to say anything on this public hearing? Come on up. Please sign in. Thank you. I'll make this brief. Um, I agree with 
the board, this, your hands are being put against the fire and we're kicking the can down the road. When we start to let this non-hardship go forward, we are setting precedents because the next person's gonna do it. So uh, my opinion, we need to cease and desist what's going on there. In other towns, when an issue like this has taken place, mm -hmm. the foundation gets moved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can we issue a cease and desist at this point? I don't see why not. Um, you know, you they don't have a permit from your um, board to be doing the work that they're doing, so they are in violation of the Carver bylaw by building. Um, you know, obviously that wasn't the the route that Gary went with. Um, okay, is Gary still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yep. What's what's your opinion on this, Gary? Well. Um, from the get-go, well, when they first, the plan that they put in for the building permit, um, the edge of the bog was, you know, it wasn't really ironed out, but it set up in bog, and I spaced out on the, uh, the new residential structure within the 100 feet of any bog. So uh, I did it as an upland bog, therefore it's not jurisdictional, it wasn't, uh, so that's why I signed off on it. So. Um, we made the agreement with the um, uh, the builder to continue with his own risk. So I don't know. You guys want to shut them down for now till you make a decision. You know that's up to you. Okay. If I if well, I just well, might, I don't remember any language about at my own risk. I just meant that all I remember is being told we're not going to put a stop work order on you. Okay. Um, that 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 was the extent of my conversation. So that, I just want to say that. Okay. Well, I remember at the last meeting we discussed this, and I believe you did indicate that the, uh, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that you did indicate that the builder was aware that he was on, working on his own risk at this point going forward. I, well, he was aware that this was coming up, yes. Yeah. So well, I knew it was coming up, but. Right. You had right. to assume there was some risk that this could happen. Not I would at assume. All. No. Not at all. And I, I, you know what? I kind of agree with you because you kept going. And like I said, that was. If I did, I, I've been doing this for 40 years. If I did, I would have stopped. Okay. As I recall, Savory made a, you, you made an explicit statement because you know we have it on cable and it goes on YouTube, saying that that exact thing. That not that you would have seen that. It's not like people watch our meetings, um, but it, it, it is part of the public record. Right. <clears throat> right. All right, so um, I mean, is anybody don't have any problem, like I said before, we'll, do, we'll, we'll get the information you want, and as far as any seating or anything like that, do what you want to do. I mean, I, I have no problem with any of that okay. stuff. Okay, fine. Um, but I wanted to be clear that you are proceeding at your own risk, even if we don't issue a cease and desist, all right? Because we still have a ruling to do here. All right. Anybody else like to say anything? Mr. Shea. Connie Shea, 148 Plymouth Street in Carver. Um, and, and this this kind of goes with with the previous one too, but this violates multiple principles of the master plan including agricultural protection wetlands protection and increased density on lots it also violates multiple um, bylaws in regards to 65 and 100 foot wetland protection as well as the 100 foot buffer zone uh, also i don't believe it can possibly be considered a hardship as this is property has been in front of the planning board for an approval not required which is a changing of the lot lines in regards to um, lots in the town. Um, as part of that process, uh, we require the delineation of wetlands, which hadn't been done. Uh, a multiple concerns have been raised about that. When we were told that it was their wetland specialists ha that had decided that um, it was an upland bog, the applicant was notified that that is something that can only be determined by the conservation board they are well aware of this they were well aware of the multiple concerns in regards to 
uh, the location to the wetlands, uh, the 200 foot riverfront stream which uh, goes through one of the lots and the concerns over the buildability of the property. I believe if you watch the August 22nd, 2023 meeting of the planning board, um, you'll see all of these concerns were raised. Uh, and once the applicant was notified that he was in violation and hadn't received all the required permits, um, it is understood that he should have stopped, that he was proceeding at his own risk, and that a hardship can only be given um, for size, shape, and topography in this particular case. And, and because the applicant is, well, the property has been in front of the planning board twice within the last two years to change the size, shape, and lot lines in regards to this property. Uh, I believe that that is a self-imposed hardship as well as um, any work that had been gone, that, that was done at all. Uh, they were well cautioned by the planning board in regards to these properties and the concerns that we had with them. I myself have received multiple calls but again, this is outside the purview of the planning board. But uh, I felt it necessary because of all the calls I received, but my own concerns and those that were raised during the meeting to show up and, and let you know what's going on. Um, and, and also, if I understand correctly, uh, a variance requires a super vote. Which what's would be, that? Uh, a ver variance requires uh, a super vote, not just a greater ma majority? No, that's not true. It's not? No, I don't believe so. Uh, I, I think you should check on that. Okay. Um, because I, I think I'll, I'll, a waiver wouldn't require it, but I, I believe a variance, uh, especially one based on hardship, would require a super majority. But, and that would mean that all four of your votes have to be in the affirmative with Mr. Hall missing. But I thank you for your time this evening and for listening to my concerns. All right, may I, ask, may I ask you a question? Sure. When the, when the applicant was in front of the planning board, did you, um, did you tell him that, that he had to present to the Conservation Commission? I believe we put it pretty much okay. that way. We, he was told that um, the determination of an upland bog was, was, could not be left to, to him and that it was a determination that could only be made by the Conservation Commission. And because the wetlands hadn't been delineated, and I'm familiar with the area, and I know the 200 foot runs through at least one of the uh, properties, um, a lot of concerns were raised in regards to that. And I, I do believe, uh, I, I don't know if it was set as a condition because it was an approval not required, and I'm not entirely certain that we can set conditions in regards to that, but that the applicant was clearly notified that this, that they had to be, the wetland areas had to be delineated. So it should come as no surprise to anybody. And anybody that's been in the business for 40 years would know that once notified that they were um, outside of the boundaries of their permits, that any anything that goes on from the point that, that they were notified is at the applicant's risk. All right, thank you. Thank as, you. I, as I stated at the, at the beginning of this part of the hearing, I was, I'm aware of everything that was going on with these three lots, and I was I was waiting for them to come in front of us. Right, and and you know we we did our job on on the planning board, and I, I'm not speaking as the planning board or anybody to do with the planning board because I, the the calls I got were were personal in nature, um, but uh, that the concerns were raised, the concerns were there, and right. and and I I do believe it was the August twenty. Second 2023 meeting, and, it, and um, it wasn't the first time that this lot, it was originally split into two, and then it was re-split again and added the cranberry box into it at that time in order to give the required footage to become a lot. And uh, when we approve these things, it's, uh, it's with the um, caveat that this is not our approval does not necessarily mean that this is a buildable lot or meets or, or reaches any of the requirements of the town because anybody can change any lot line at any time and if a neighbor wants to give five feet to another neighbor, he can come to us with an approval not required and we can do that also. So 
it's right. kind of we put it on all the plans. But okay. thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Okay. Yeah. So all right. Um, so we want to uh, continue this till the 24th of April. And we're looking to get um, verification of the type of bog it is with soil samples taken with a uh, with the, an overlay done of the uh, USGS maps from the early 1960s, I believe it was 62 or 63, along with the, visual, the aerial photographs from that same era superimposed on a uh, uh, on the current configuration of the bog and uh, we want to find out where the, the, if and where the border is between the original uh, wetland bog and the, and the upland bog, which should be able to do with, with, uh, with soil samples. Um, do we want to order a cease and desist? I would like to see one put in place, yes. I would as well. All right. Are there any other comments from anybody on the floor? All right. So um, we, I will um, accept a uh, motion to continue this hearing until April 24th uh, with the inclusion of a cease and desist order for any work to be done between now and our next hearing two weeks from tonight. I make that motion, please. Second. All right. Carl made the motion and seconded it. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's uh, four zero. Thank you. Okay. It's just uh, the minutes. You guys should have a copy of those attached to your um, agenda there. Yep. So March 20th. This looked fine to me. Yeah. Actually, in unanticipated, Mr. Moore asked about an after effect NOI being submitted for Lot 1 Zero Lakeview. So you did min in the minutes. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes as written. Second. All right. Carl approves. I, I seconded it. Um, for. Um, Uh, things unanticipated. Uh, just so everyone knows, the select board signed the acceptance letter for the Wade Street property that we all signed at our last meeting. Uh, the lawyer for the um, RDA uh, is going to come to town hall. It's with Jill downstairs right now. Uh, the, the Mylar plan and the signed deed and the signed acceptance letter. Uh, the um, the lawyer for the RDA is going to come and get that and bring it to the registry and the property will become ours. Very good. Um, Great. At our next meeting, I will be asking, we'll, I'll talk to you, we'll put it on the agenda. Uh, um, our part of the financial uh, part of that is the, um, is the registry fee and her, and her fee for, for doing that part. Uh, all the, all the, um, the plot plans and the surveying were, were taken care of by the RDA. So, and we'll take that right out of our, uh, our, uh, our fee fund. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All right, Carl and Curtis. It's been motioned to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we're out. Thank you, Area 58. Thank you.